Right, it's 2010, January. I'm just about to start a long process of um, converting my original family tree cassette tape recordings um, into a form that I can have on DVD and CD accompanied by um, photographs that I did at the time of the recording as well. So um, here we go. I'm not quite sure what's on this tape, but I know it's one of the early ones. Outside, waiting for Zara as we start our journey off to Suffolk, Norfolk. A bit exciting, a bit sad about leaving Louis. Duncan's gone off to work. Hopefully, I feed him and everything and let him out. I'll be in touch again in a minute. Right, we're set in the car now. Brandy's bed is all arranged in the back seat, nice and comfortable for later. Zara's all ready. Just going to the garage to get our goodies, then we're off on the journey, and I won't be contacting this tape again until we get to the service station, unless anything happens. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. It's um, the 2nd of July, 2005, Saturday. Brandy's birthday. Brandy's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brandy. Happy birthday to you. Yes, we're driving along now towards Cambridge. I'm sorry I forgot to come back on earlier. We've had several stops on the motorway. We're going to come up at a service station now near Newmarket. And it's getting exciting. We're actually in the Cambridgeshire countryside, we think. Getting closer. See you in a minute. Right, we've arrived at Hockwald. Um... We stopped at a place called Lakenheath, where there's, um, it's got a few more shops and, and a cash point and things like that. So it was a good job we stopped there first, because I was able to get the money, um, get some food, you know, the perishables. Um, and then we came on to Hockwold, which is um, a little village, but it's got very few visible amenities, just a small store, which is a bit, not much bigger than my garage. Um, but that's the sort of type of, you know, that's how it is. But it's a lovely little cottage. It's very old. The walls are very thick. You can tell uh, the, in the window sills, very thick. Quaint little place with original features. Um, wet, well maintained. Lovely little garden, but um, out the front. But we can't really let Brandy loose because you found an ashtray. Oh. Oh, I did so good. Yeah, I know, but we can open the windows. No, we can open the windows. Let's open them now. I used to smoke in those days. Well, that's good, though. Oh, yes, I has just found the ashtray, so that's a good sign. And we've got a lovely little, quaint little kitchen diner. Oh, and the features in that kitchen room. It's like something out of the Macbeth, really. It's a really old, very old iron sort of oven thing with a, a, a cauldron hanging down from the chimney in the fireplace, really old this is. And it's been, it's nice, it's lovely and bright and oldie worldy things inside. Really um, narrow, steep stairs though, Brandy had a bit of a fall. Um, we've got two very adequate bedrooms. I'm um, sorry I was having the double bed, I, I, I shall decide which bed I'm going in um, and it's all very well nicely laid out this electric fire that we can put on that glows if it gets cold um, and lots and lots of leaflets all about this area and Cambridge and Suffolk so we've got quite a lot to do tonight just sorting out looking at the maps um, so I'll speak to you again later just taking um, Brandy out for a walk and we found an, a, an abandoned church really, quite a big one called St Peter's you know it looked unkept like the graveyard all the stones were facing the wrong way or some were facing the right way um, so that was interesting uh, when we tried to compare it with the churches that we're going to that we know where our, our ancestors are buried to see how 
how um, it compares. We're going to go and look at another church later, St. James's in, in um, Hockwold. And then we're going to have an early night because we've got quite a lot going on tomorrow. Got the um, lasagnas in the oven. Got a nice can of lager. It's lovely and peaceful here. Beautiful. Very old. Right, it's 2010 now. I'm just interrupting a bit because um, the first part of this tape is when Zara and I first went up to Suffolk and Cambridge on a holiday and we stayed at a place um, on the border with um, Cambridge or Suffolk at Thetford, near Thetford, um, Hockwold. And um, it was then that we first visited all the villages and places where our ancestors had come from. And that was a year before we actually moved up there. But it did give us a lot of inspiration, that holiday. And we achieved an awful lot in that week we were there. And we really enjoyed ourselves as well. Right, here's carrying on with that tape now. Zara, me and Brandy in 2005, which is nearly five years ago. What is 17... 42, I think it was built, so it might be a few ghosts, we don't know. We'll find out later. Okay, I'll speak to you soon. Okay, off we go again. <laughs> We've just had our tea. I think it's a bit bad. <laughs> and now we're going to look at, I think it's St James's in Hockwold. It's about, um, quarter to eight, still light, just going to have a look round the village that we're staying in, we don't know, we might even trace somebody here yet, see you later, <sighs> right, it's the end of the first day of our holiday, I'm in this little cottage watching this sort of live aid Africa concert, um, and Zara's gone to bed. I'm just going to take Brandy outside for a quick look out in the garden. And then we're off tomorrow to actually find the places where the ancestors were christened, married and buried. So I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, it's the... I think it's the 3rd of July now, we're our first proper day in um, Suffolk, Norfolk and we're making our very exciting trip around a number of villages where our ancestors were located. We're going to go off now towards Newmarket in order to Shall then I? wander about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you later. Right, we have found Borough Green, where we've drove through the village, we've just come outside to um, breathe in the local air and, and enjoy the, the scene, which is amazing. This is where our ancestors um, farmed, owned farms, and it's a beautiful scene with cornfields and things like that. It's just absolutely wonderful. We're going back in a minute to the find the church and the the local pub where some of our ancestors used to reside and live on the green. Um, be back in a minute. I know Zara's in front of me with Brandy. We're going down a public footpath on the out just on the outskirts of the village. We've got these. I think it's maize be maize, the, 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 um, or corn or something growing, or it could even be wheat, so I said. We're just taking Brandy for a little walk down this little pathway, so we've got, in view of our car, we're just taking her for a little walk, so she can have a whittle before we go back. Oh, it's a weird feeling coming along here, because this is where our ancestors, we've actually going back 400 years when these people were born and lived. We haven't actually seen the church yet, but it's probably in the village somewhere, but we'll find out in the local pub where it is if we... And 
Yeah, it's just an amazing experience this is, breathing in the air, walking on the soil that our ancestors farmed and worked on. And yeah, this is like all the work we've done on our family tree is coming real. It's becoming real. I'm looking over at the village, probably houses that they lived in in the past very exciting moment this is it's like weird and wait till we find the graves as if there are any I guess we're out there. be back in a minute yeah we just come across some an oak tree and Zara's so taking a picture of me by it it's an actual oak tree because this is oak country we're in here this is to do with the oak family isn't it mainly right we're actually in Barra Green now we've been to the pub and had a drink and that's a lady there whose daughter's running the pub at present. There's lots of old photographs in the pub of um, agricultural workers and that sort of thing. Um, and now we're actually at Borough Green Church, and it's a very weird feeling. The old brick wall is starting to crumble in places that surround it. It has had some renovations done to the front of it. And we're now going to go around looking at the graves. Right, I'm having a little bit of problems here and there with technology um, where my computer cuts out now and again so sometimes there might be small silent breaks when this happens. Apologies, hope the situation will improve. Ah, right, one of the graves we found is, um, it's got like a, t a stone top on it, of um, Christopher Rebecca Lacey. Christopher and Rebecca Lacey. Um, Charles. Together. Okay, no, Charles of, I think, of Christopher and Rebecca Lacey. He, looked like he died at age 28. Right, up next to the church, by the wall of the church, there's an Anne Brown who died January the 2nd, 1881, age 87, so she was quite old. There's another stone leaning up against it as well, could be related. What's a Samuel, son of Samuel and Anne Brown, who died December the 28th, 1869. And there's another Brown, Samuel... Brown, 18, could be 01 or 31, in sacred memory of Thomas and, there's another Brown there, there's a couple of stones leaning up against a church as well. Leaning against the wall is an old stone of a Mary Brown who departed uh, January the 6th, 1893, is it that far ahead though? Oh, right, Don't forget. If you know what I mean, that's what I'm saying, that you've got to think of it at the time. George Stanton, a big upright stone, a big square with lots of room for everybody in it. John Bridge, who fell asleep in 1990, age 73, and his wife Ellen, look, here's her own daughter. Yeah. This is the one that ran the pub. <coughs> well, I don't know if it's a relative yet. I've got, I think it is. I've, I've got. I've forgotten everything. Well, in my thing, I yeah. John Bridge. He was the landlord of the Bull Inn, and his wife is with him. Beloved wife of the, who fell asleep, July the thirteenth. Oh, that's Daisy's birthday. Nineteen twenty-four, age seventy-five. So that's um, one plot of somebody we found, the oaks, so it's quite like the other bridges that is, but um, there might be oaks as well. Have you looked at all these over here? Oh, I thought you said that on. John Howler, who died April the 5th, 1862, age 62, and his wife Mary, who died May the 27th, 1885, aged 82. Also Sarah, their daughter, who died February the 21st, 1867, aged 20. 
I thought I put Harriet Briggs, February, I don't know, 1910, age 64. Oh, so John Briggs, husband of the above, died May the 25th, 1912, age 75. Also some Millers here, there was a John Miller who died 10th of December, I think, 1891, and, and a George Miller, 15th of August 1908, I think, and Sarah Ann, wife of somebody, and now have got Mary Ann Briggs. Wife of Luke Briggs, oh I remember Luke Briggs, I've got him written down somewhere, who died July the 18th, 1917. Yeah, I've got that family, aged 79 years. So they're pretty old, they would be related, going back that long. Well, we've got a Jane, in loving memory of Jane, wife of James Elsden, who died February the 26th, 1898, age, not quite sure the age. The grave there. The grave next of another Elston as well. Um, Charles Johnson, born September the 5th, 1833, died December 1835. He only lived two years. Sir Charles Johnson. See so what the ward graves? I was creeping in the bushes now. We had a fallout a minute ago. I'm oh, going in behind the trees. I'm going into the woods now with Zara. In the spooky area. In sacred. Oh. In sacred memory of Robert. Something and his wife Robert. Oh, my foot! He's putting on it. You've been a good girl, Brian, aren't you, love? Have you read this one? Well, Wait, Robert Lacey. Kate, beloved wife of Robert Lacey, who departed from this life May the tenth, eighteen. 95, age 68, and Robert, who died January the 27th, actually I've got that written down, 1917, age 90. Three is Caroline Parker, widow of John Oxley Parker of Drinkstone, Suffolk. One called Mary, eldest daughter of William Thomas and Mary. She departed 1860. Six. Right, uh, this tape will continue on another one. So I've decided to divide the cassettes up into smaller sections because it makes it easier to locate specific parts rather than having to go through the whole of a tape recording in order to find, say, a specific grave. If I split them up into smaller sections, it makes it easier. I shall also point out that on this very first visit, we never actually found our own family. For some reason, we missed those graves completely. Very strange. And it took another week before we came back and found the oaks. And since then, of course, I've found others. I've been there several times. So that's the end of this particular section, which it will continue in another smaller section and in the end it will all be on DVD and CD, accompanied with photographs. This is Sheila, January the 11th, 2010.